All right, Q2 is in and the EV landscape is starting to shape up with some very interesting players in the market. Of course, Tesla leads out with the big boys and I think they've kind of set the, the state, but I think there are a lot of moves happening around the world. So we're gonna dive into all of that. My name is Paul Barron, welcome back to Tech Path. Let's go into, first of all, the scope of EV sales today. You know, it, today, it looks a lot different than it did just a year ago. When you look at where Tesla was leading pretty much the industry last year, this year there was so many new vehicles brought out and also a lot of advancements in many of the companies in terms of their overall growth. I wanna to jump to China first and jump to NEO's in terms of their EV sales. Near, uh, NEO doubled their sales to a new monthly record in June. You can kind of see their numbers right here. I just wanted to show you some specific things. Uh, this is the company report, 8,083 vehicle deliveries up 116% over year over year. I know that feels and sounds really small, especially in China compared to 200,000 vehicles. But if you narrowed just China deliveries uh, for Tesla, numbers might be a little bit different. So it's, it's, well, they would be a little bit different. But sales by model, the, e, the ES6, this is their five-seat SUV, 3,700, up 52%. Their EC6, the coupe version, 2830, that's a new vehicle for them. Then the seven or six-seat SUV, that one's up 19%. And then, of course, total, you can see the numbers there. Not bad, really, when you look at this. So far, though, uh, NEO has significantly increased its electric car deliveries in the ES6. Look at these numbers right here, 18,000. 14,000, almost 9,000, and a total of 41,000, which is up 196% year over year. This company, again, one of the key companies, I think that the People's Republic of China and the CCP really get behind. Uh, NEO seems to be one of the players there, and it's, I think it's a race between NEO and BYD uh, if you follow the Chinese EV space. And the reason we look so closely is because I think this is gonna start setting the stage for where the market is flowing worldwide, including here in the US. Let's jump over to Xpeng, we'll stay in China. Xpeng increasing its EV sales by 617%. This one was the one that shocked me the most. Uh, this is insane. These numbers are just absolutely flying off the chart for them. 6,500 vehicles, deliveries in June, 617% more. Big year for them when you look at it. the P7 4700, the G3 1800 and a total of uh, 6,500 there hitting that 617 number. I think this is gonna be interesting so far this year when you look at these overall for the year, uh, both Q1 and Q2, um, P7 at almost 20,000 vehicles and their uh, G3 at 11,000, above 11,000. So they're up almost to 31,000 uh, 31, vehicles. So let's just assume they get to 60 or 70,000 vehicles this year to stay on that pace the likelihood is we're probably gonna to continue to see growth from Xpeng uh, over the next few quarters, and that's up 459% right now. So pretty interesting stuff when you see the amount of new vehicles and the crossover cars that are coming in, both from NEO and also Xpeng, because I think those are gonna open up new markets, much like Model Y did for Tesla. So be thinking about that. Let's jump over here to Ford. And Ford is the one that, and, and there has been reports that, you know, this was a little bit softer than what was anticipated, but I think Ford was kind of learning the ropes, you know, understanding how, one, how to get and produce these vehicles, and then two, how to deliver and sell them because they essentially have a very, I think, a little bit of a resistance at the dealer level. So that's going to be interesting to watch as we see this, but increase its U.S. sales by 25% year over year which allowed to achieve a positive quarter, 495,000. That's all their vehicles, of course. But the all-electric Mustang Mach-E came in at 6,600 vehicles. I mean, that's to me, that's respectable for the first quarter of 2021. And I think when you look at that and see that compared to the rest of what the world was doing at that time, Ford did a pretty good job. I think they did a pretty good job. Moreover, nearly 70% of Mark, here's the one that was kind of interesting to me. 70% of the Mach-E buyers are coming over from competitive brands. This is a big deal. I think that's gonna be one of those things to watch because at some point you're gonna to start to see competitive brands in terms of EV brands. Because remember, a lot of people in the EV space, car manufacturers and a lot of the pundits we've had here on our show, 
always say that the competitor are the ICE vehicles. And the likelihood is that at some point, we're gonna to start to see a little bit of a natural evolution in adoption, and it is gonna to start to be EV to EV comparison. So that's coming, it will happen, and it seems to be uh, on pace to happen much sooner than later. Another important note is that the electrified vehicle sales hit a new record, 25,900 in Q1, that was up 74% for them. Uh, so these are, are some pretty nice numbers, I think, with Ford and in their Q1 numbers and their Q2 numbers did almost equally as impressive. One thing, though, that happened in, of course, Q2 is their jump to the Ford Lightning, and that's the F-150. And I think this is going to be the one that really starts to place things in perspective for Ford. They've got, of course, the Terminator right here, plan planning on doing something with them which I think this is gonna make you know, for a very, not only fun, but more importantly, it's going to make people understand the evolution in technology for Ford. And I think that's gonna be the thing that, that they have to do. So they've aligned it really uh, nicely with his, uh, the Arnold SCI, which is World Summit. That's a big uh, sustainability and climate change summit that he's doing. And here's the big one right here. Ford has already more than 100,000 reservations for the F-150 Lightning. But if they get a proper media campaign in place, people are really looking at this that could actual, actually move this very aggressive for Ford into Q2 and Q3. And I've talked to a lot of EV enthusiasts that have either one, currently have Rivians on order. And this was something that even, uh, you know, I got a chance to catch a, a video from Ben Sullins, who has is, is been a Tesla you know, pundit for years. And he moved away from Tesla and went to Rivian primarily because he's looking for the pickup truck. And now his concern is maybe the next step is to replace the Rivian with the Ford. This is what I'm talking about. We're starting to see this kind of movement and action in the space. And I think as we see scenarios like that, uh, it's gonna get interesting very quickly. Continue on, uh, and this, this right here is to my point in Q2. Ford, their miss on Mach-E see, sees a little bit of a dip, uh, but GM's Bolt, holy moly, 351% growth for this particular vehicle. This is gonna be a pretty amazing thing. And, and there's two things that are factoring into this right now. Used cars and new cars have had, obviously because of the ship shortage that we saw in Q1 and 2, but I think they're really having their day in the sun in terms of just availability. It's getting harder and harder to find these vehicles. And it's also getting longer and longer to get to EVs in terms of deliveries, including things like even the Mach-E. I looked into purchasing a Mach-E a, a couple of months ago, and, it, and I was just amazed at how hard it was just to go find that vehicle. Now I'm looking into the Ford F-150. I was really considering the Rivian because I know I'll never get my hands on a Cybertruck. It just you know, the list is, the wait list is entirely too long to get there. So all that's going to be interesting uh, to go. But here's the Ford, uh, the Ford Motor Q2 numbers, which is impressing to me. Their autom automobile estimate, 519,000, up with 20%. Their Q2 2020, uh, over 2020, and down 19% versus their uh, Q2 2019, which was really kind of the big year for, for Ford. Uh, and then here's their numbers right here. 475,000 vehicles up 9.6 from a year ago. And then here's the Mustang Mach-E right there uh, falling to, let's highlight that, falling to 63.61 up from the 66.14. So just a slight dip. And again, that's, that's one of those scenarios I think that uh, it'll be interesting to see whether or not Ford's thunder, no pun intended, comes from the lightning because I think that's going to be their major, obviously everybody knows that's gonna be their major winner. And the Mach-E is, even though it is an SUV, it still has that Mustang feel. And there's a lot of people that still look at that as a sports vehicle and not so much as a family vehicle. So there may be some scenarios there versus say the Model Y, because the Model Y, because of its trim levels, you can dress those things up and, or dress them down. And I think that's why the Model Y has just been, and obviously it's a Tesla. Um, let's go over here to also with GM. Uh, this is interesting because if you look at 680,000 vehicles up 39%, this is their ICE 
Uh, they did get the Silverado and Sierra picks, uh, pickups, which rose 35 and 40 percent. I think GM's going to be in a little bit of a, a trouble with the Lightning hitting the market. We may see a lot of movement from GM truck buyers over to the Lightning. And then this Bolt, as I said, 351 year over year, rose 25 percent quarter over quarter. And they're, of course, GM is selling a refreshed Bolt now, which I think has really had a lot to do with that. Let's jump to the Germans. U.S. Volkswagen ID4 sales above 5,700 in Q2 21. I thought this was a little soft personally when I saw the number because I just feel like, you know, Volkswagen just has a lot more marketing power and they have a lot more depth in terms of what they've been doing in this space from both vertical integration and their technology. So announced very strong sales results, what they're saying in the second quarter of the year. I, I feel like this is needing to go up quite a bit, but they sold 120,000 vehicles, uh, which is the highest quarterly result since 1973. That's a big deal. However, most interesting thing is the v, VW ID4 sales result, which were uh, 5756. They say quite good, actually, taking into consideration that it's first full quarter uh, since delivery started in March. So that's going to be the key there, I think. Can they roll out? I, I thought this was would get a bigger splash, much like the Mach-E got a big splash when it first came out. And I know when you see Ford, uh, and also look at the Bolt, big splash when that uh, second generation Bolt came out, big splash. So I think that's gonna be the thing to watch. But in Q2, the ID4 was also responsible for a noticeable 4.8% of the total Volkswagen sales. That's where I'm interested is that, it's interesting to see that EV has been camped on as a key contributor to overall sales. So I think the evolution is for sure in play now on a global scale in terms of EV adoption. So that's gonna be a big thing to move forward. Let's jump over to Porsche. Porsche Taycan sales surge in Q2. I love this car. Uh, have I had a chance to be in this vehicle and it is impressive. Now it's expensive, but it's impressive. Here's the question, can Porsche hold on against the, un the oncoming um, Mercedes and BMW placements in this category. So I think the EQS line with Mercedes is gonna be one to watch. And if they can, it's probably gonna be a little bit, well, it will be a little bit less expensive, but I think it's gonna be an interesting vehicle that will compare maybe against the Taycan. And that'll be interesting. But anyway, back to their numbers here, delivering a record number, obviously it's a record, 3,300 Taycans, all versions, growth rate uh, from a low base of 818 last year, which I think was still their coming out year for Porsche. And this is something that is interesting. Um, this is something that's interesting in terms of Porsche buyers, is that I think there's a lot of transition that's happening with the Porsche you know, buyers right now. They're moving over from this theme. I mean, because it's, it's a hard thing to jump from you know, these supercars to an EV until you get in one and truly feel that instant torque and that performance level, that I think is gonna change for Porsche over time. And I think we're gonna see some big numbers coming from Porsche. I wanna look over at their stocks. We did a little stock analysis array and everything seems to be up a little bit. This is the quarter right here. Everybody started pretty nice and kind of bunched up together here. When you look at uh, all the players here, which is Neo, BYD, Xpeng, Ford, Tesla, and GM. Uh, and I'll kind of highlight these out. The Tesla is that lower purple line right there. We've got GM right here in this kind of this turquoise line. Hopefully uh, you guys can tell that. And then you've got Xpeng making that huge climb right here. And then Neo in the orange line, also that huge climb. And then Ford right here, again, coming out with that Mach-E. We saw the sentiment numbers and I'll reference back to those. But look at this climb for Ford. This is a nice little move for Ford, 19%, uh, 28% uh, up for uh, NEO, 22% up for Xpeng, and of course GM holding it around flat and Tesla holding around flat. So not bad movement when you look at overall uh, in terms of Q1, I mean Q2. That, that I think is the key here is because this is still one of those, this is getting going into the summer months, you know, there it's, it is one of the more popular months. Uh, versus like the first quarter, which is usually a little bit weaker. Q3, Q4, that's going to be the ones to really watch. And I want to jump quickly back to our sentiment. Maybe you guys didn't catch this in a previous video we did, but this was the array 
of sentiment uh, for EV. So we dissected EV terminology and use case out of the sentiment uh, data that we track across a variety of social platforms. And you can kind of see Tesla still leads the, the, you know, the pack and holding somewhat steady in that set, close to almost 80 range, 78 all the way through the last month in the quarter at 78.3. So not much move for Tesla. The one, as I said, that really uh, I was very impressed with was Ford. And that's the 52, again, just barely new. And I think a lot of people were uh, leaning on uh, the Mach-E and its mixed results. Uh, and then it jumps to 60 and then we see it up at 68 right now. This is an impressive move, but I think that is all Ford Lightning. And of course, BMW making some slight moves. Mercedes still a little bit flat. They've got a lot of life left in them in terms of people just realizing the EVs are available. BYD very strong uh, on sentiment and continue to be one of the higher performers when it comes to the Chinese. Neo also holding strong. Uh, and Xpeng, you know, right there. BYD, Xpeng, and Neo, man, they are just neck and neck. Uh, in terms. G GM has a little bit of movement, but again, I think this is still a new market for GM. Even though the Bolt is a great vehicle and it's one that I think is going to be a flagship, GM needs another really great vehicle to come out, whether they use an SUV or they go ahead and get their pickup truck moving because they are going to have to compete with Ford in the Lightning to make this happen. So anyway, there's a lot happening right now. That's the, the key. We, we have so many numbers coming out right now. We're going to have of course, uh, a video on Tesla's performance in terms of the financial performance. This is just deliveries, but in the financial performance coming up soon, we'll have a couple of analysts on that too, I think, that are going to be able to give us some insights uh, for those numbers. If you're listening in over on the podcast right now, make sure and give us some stars. And if you're here on YouTube, subscribe. That's the number one way you can help the channel, share it with a friend. And as always, I'll see you next time right here on TechPath.